Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about load learner tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be getting into something very specific about an automation testing tool, which is a one of the framework in order to data drive a test. Now, what exactly data driven testing or parameterizing of a test is all about? Here, we will be running a single script with multiple set of data. And that basically helps you to avoid repeatability or manual approach of repeating a particular test with several set of data. Now, this approach basically allows you to make use of a single script and passing on multiple set of data for several set of iteration. To a certain extent, this approach is not called as data driven testing because data does not drive the test. But of course, I can run several iterations with multiple set of data using a single set of instruction. And that's where the repetition of a test can be possible using the BU gen of the load runner component. So let's have a look today and understand how we can pass multiple set of data using a single BU gen script. As a part of this tutorial, we will be understanding how to data drive a test, how to make use of parameters in BU gen scripts, and how to make use of different set of data for different users when you perform a scenario-based performance testing. To begin understanding the same test case, the number one thing would be, of course, to prepare a base script. Here, I already have recorded a particular script which includes three different actions, which has the different parts of it. For example, we have the user in it, we have the user end, and we have the action part, which has all the details about the transaction of booking a flight. Now, booking a flight requires you to launch and login, book the flight, and sign off. So, we will be looking forward to parameterize the same. In order to get started, the number one thing is you need to find out and select the set of data which you want to parameterize. You can actually parameterize any of those steps which includes a value. So, right here, if you see, there are three functions which consist of all the value fields, and any of these can be parameterized if you wish to. But right now, I'll be just making it simple and short for you to understand that I'll be picking up the fly from city, that is the departure city, and the arrival city, that is fly to. And we will be looking forward to parameterize them. Now, in order to parameterize them, you can actually declare your parameters first and then make use of it in the script, or even you can create it on the go. In order to start creating your parameters before you can make use of it, you can access the design menu, in the parameter section, you can go to create new parameter and define a parameter, for example, fly underscore from. Now it's up to you to make use of any name as you are defining a user defined parameter. So the name doesn't really matter, except it should not be having a space or break between the words. It must be a string in order to be called as a parameter, just like a variable. So it's up to you. They are not case sensitive. You can make use of any name. The parameter type, there are several parameter types which we'll be talking about it in later tutorials. But right now we're just using a file which will be making use of an external DAT file, which is the data file which will be passing the parameter to our script. And this is an external file which I'll be showing you in no time. So press OK to create it. And now my one of the parameters are created. In order to make use of pre-existing parameters which you have created already, you just have to select the value which you want to parameterize, right click on that, and go with replace with parameter and select the parameter which is popping up here. Also, if in case your parameter is not appearing here, you can always go to parameter list and select the parameter and close. Okay, you can just see the parameter list there and just select the parameter from here. There will be a pop up as far as this parameter appears multiple places. For example, do you want to replace all the occurrences of this term that is Denver? The Denver was the fly from city, which I replaced with the parameter. So it seems like the script has recognized that the appearance of the Denver are at many places. Now I'm not sure and I'm not aware that where exactly is the second occurrence. So as far as you are not aware where is the second occurrence or other occurrences of Denver, you cannot replace it blindly. So as far as you are aware that where is the second occurrence, you can say yes or else just say no to keep it at the right place where you're doing right now. Say no to it. Similarly, the other way to do it is on the go creation of parameters and making use of it. So double click the place, right click on it, replace with parameter and you still get the option to create a new parameter. 
because you cannot make use of the existing parameter for the different city or different field. If I want, I can make use of the same parameter at all the places as far as I want to make use of the same value at all the places. But I want different city to be in the fly to list. So create a new parameter and this time I name it as uh, fly underscore two and just say file type and continue by saying OK. That's it. Again, the same pop-up will appear. Say no for that. Now you're done using the parameter in your script. But right now we are still remaining with running or adding the rest the rest of data to run the other iterations. Before you can go ahead, you just have to access the parameters again from the design menu. Click on the parameter list and have a look on the list of the parameters which you are using here. Now this is where the place where you can add the rest of the remaining parameters. You can always click on add row to add a new row of data and replace the word value with the parameter. Now again remember the list of the data here which you are using must be in the application. If in case it's not in the application, it will throw you an error. Similarly, click on add row or you can also make use of edit with notepad to run the different set of data or add the rest of the data. So for example, I have want to fly from Zurich. And once you are done, make sure you save it and close it. This is where the file path shows that where this exactly the file is that is the external file which carries the data because the parameter type is file, which is external file. If in case you want to make use of any internal sources, you can make use of it. Similarly, I want to add the details for the fly from city. So I'm going to make use of uh, the first city as Denver. And if I want to add the other way around, like using file with notepad, I can make use of any other application as well. Again, highlighting team that these fields are uh, these values or the cities are already available in my application. That's the reason I'm using it. It's just not user defined. Close it. And now you're done. Just cross check by swapping between the two parameters that all the values appear. The common mistake what people generally make is they click on add row and they just do it like replace the value, but they don't change or hit enter after entering the value. So when they go to fly from and when they come to fly to, it again remains value. So make sure that once you enter the value or you're using the add row option, you make sure that you have entered after entering the value, you have pressed the return key to make that change happen or else always make use of edit with notepad, which will give you a confirmation. In order to delete a row, you can click on delete row here and that will disappear. The other option also available here is called as add column. That means you can go and add column to the data sheet to make use of a different set of data for different users. Now that's what the concept is. When I call this particular script in controller to run a performance test and I have around 50 users, but I don't want all the 50 users to use the same data at the same time, then I can actually create multiple columns and provide different set of data. And the distribution will be like if I have five columns here and I have 50 users, 10 users will be using each column. So it just equally distributes the load on each of the column to use the data. But if in case you want all the 50 users to use the same data, then you just have to leave it as one column. So similar way, you can go ahead and add the columns, but this thing will be basically utilized. The columns will be basically utilized during the controller, not during the view gen, because view gen is just for one particular user. Also, we have some settings here that how we want to use the data. So how to select the next row? That means when a particular iteration runs, that means I can define any number of iteration right now. For example, I have three set of data, but I can run it for 10 iterations. So every single iteration, how should I select a data? So there are different options available here. That is sequential, random, uniquely, or same line as F from. Sequential means one after the other, and the data will be repeated once the third data gets exhausted. So the fourth iteration will again go to the first row, and fifth, sixth, then again the first row, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So it will automatically sequentially select the data and the data will be repeated because here in load runner, I can define the number of iteration irrespective of the number of row of data we have. The next option is random. Of course, the random will allow the system to select randomly a data from the data pool. So I have three set of data for any number of iteration. It can select any particular row as the input for that particular iteration. When it comes to unique, it only selects a data for one time. And after that, it can decide what to do next when you run out of values. So the third option will be enabled only if you make use of unique. 
Do you want to abort user if the data gets exhausted, unique data? Continue in a cyclic manner that will follow up with the sequential approach or continue with the last value. So you can define as far as you are making use of unique selection of the rows or unique data selection. Right now in my fourth iteration, I'll get an error. So as far as I have defined what to do next, it will prompt me and continue there. So I will say like maybe about user or continue with the last value. And the last one is same line as fly from. Don't forget team, right now you are in the fly to. So whatever setting you select for fly from, the same row will be corresponding row will be selected for fly to as well. So you can relate or create a relationship between the two parameters to select the set of data. So these are the four options which you may have in the order to run the test. So let me just set it to sequential and when do you update the value? Each iteration, each occurrence or once. Each iteration means every single iteration. When the iteration changes, then it will switch to the next row. When I say each occurrence, that means within a particular iteration, if this parameter is written two times, then every occurrence, it will switch to the next row. And the third one is just once. So it will just select the data once and use it for all other iterations as well. Now that is very helpful in case of random. That means if I set the sequential option to random and say each or once, then randomly out of the three set of data, it will just select one of them and it will use for all other iterations the same value. So these are the different options which you have in order to drive your test using the data. So fly from is sequential and each iteration, fly to sequential and each iteration. By having this particular understanding, you can go ahead and run this test. But before that, make sure that you have closed this particular window and there is no save button. I repeat, there is no save button because when you open the notepad and you have saved it already, you don't have to really save it. You can still create a new parameter or delete an existing parameter using these two options. Click on close and you are all set to run. Before running, make sure that you have saved the script to make the changes take effect. Now, one last step to run it for different iteration is to go into the runtime settings, which is in replay, runtime settings, and there you have to define the number of iterations. So right now, I'm going to run it for three iteration as a simple test with three set of data. If you want, you can run it for any number of iteration, but the result will be same because I'm going to get an error. <laughs> let me just go and show, it to you, show the same thing to you. So go ahead and uh, let's come to any of the actions. No matter wherever you are, it will always start from the user in it by default. So let's click on run. And also at the bottom, there is a tab here called as runtime data, which you can actually see that during the runtime, what data is used. So you can see Portland, London, London, Zurich, and all three iterations got over. And if I see, I have an error here called as two replay errors detected. If I just expand the output log, I see that my first iteration was successful. So starting iteration one, ending iteration one. So iteration one was successful in all the events. But when it went to the iteration two, the iteration three or iteration two ending here, I got an error on this particular page, which is web submit form reservation underscore uh, dot pl underscore two. And same error happened for uh, the iteration three as well, which is on the same page. But what is this error? You can comment me down because we will be looking onto this. This is a different option in Vuegen to resolve this issue. So I'll leave you with the question here and assignment that meanwhile, I come back on Wednesday and share with you the solution for this. You find out and tell me that what do you think is the wrong here and what is that will be the solution to resolve this particular script execution. The only reason I'm not providing you a solution here because this is a different topic which I'll be covering in my next tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.